This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com. Today I'm going to work on some sound effects for an unreleased game called Space Unknown. I've been working on it for the past couple months and have finished the majority of the sound design, but the developers requested some additional sounds for uh, boss enemies spawning into the arena. So I'm going to work on some of those today and let you see my workflow. I've done the majority of the sound design in the Sunvox Music Tracker software, so this is where I'm going to start. I'll create an analog generator. change the oscillator to a square wave and I'm going to unpatch it by holding down shift and dragging back to output that unpatches it and when you want to patch it you hold down shift again and drag it to patch and you can see the little animation shows the flow of audio to the output I'm going to put a oh, actually there's a filter in the analog generator so I'll use that Turn the filter on. So the developer wants the sounds to be approximately one to two seconds long so I'll try and shoot for that in this session but if it's too long I can shorten it in ardor in the uh, mastering phase and I don't want to make the note too low because it's going to come out of a mobile speaker and those aren't too good at reproducing low frequencies, so I may just jump this up an octave. Try feeding this through a vibrato. Uh, that's a bit much. Lower the amplitude. And I'll reduce the frequency of it. You can see this animation is slowing down. Just so it has a bit more character than the static tone. I'm going to add in a reverb in parallel. And let's try a pitch shifter as well. get a little bit of detuning to thicken up the sound. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh. Alright, 
that's a neat effect. So let me do this. I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing the space bar. I'm going to put the note there and then I'll play it back using F11. That's going to loop my sequence, which is just one note for now. The note just keeps playing. I want it to be short, so I'm going to... I have some release on the note, so when I stop the note, there's still going to be a fade out at the end. So I'm just going to press tilde and insert a note off immediately after. All right, that's too short, so let's push that out. I'm going to put my cursor over the note off and press insert to push it backwards. So we have a nice short effect. And the only thing that's ringing out is the reverb tail, which I can trim. And I'm just going to tweak the pitch shifter. So that's a cool effect. So I want to automate both the feedback and the grain to increase. So what I'll do first is let's do the feedback. I'll right click on feedback. I'll, so, so before I do any of that, I want to put my cursor in the lane where I want to write the automation. So I want to write it in the second lane. So you can get there by pressing the tab key. It'll put you in the second lane. Right click on feedback, select right to pattern. And this is going to put the effect here. And I'm going to duplicate that. So I'll press control D. Oh, I'm in the wrong lane. Okay. Nope. That's not working. I'm doing something wrong. So I'm going to right click here, select duplicate. That still is not working. I guess I can't do that with the effect. Okay, that's fine. I'll right click, choose X, X, Y, Y level drawing. And this allows me to draw in changes over time for this particular parameter. So if you haven't used Sunbox before, this first number here in yellow. This is the parameter that I'm automating. And the second number is the value for that parameter. And the XY levels drawing is just a, a easier way to do it rather than typing out all the values. So I want to start low. So let's do like midway and then increase the values here. And let's play that back and listen. It's not doing anything. I think I need to copy this value the entire way. Uh, interpolate. Is that what I want? That is not what I want. It's not duplicate. Is it place evenly? No. There we go. I had to highlight it. So highlight it, select duplicate, and now if I right click, oh, I gotta get rid of the highlight. Level drawing is on. Oh, I'm not in edit mode. So press spacebar, enter edit mode, and increase that. And let's see how that sounds. Cool. Value increase here. All right, so I want to do the same thing for grain size. So I'll tab over, 
I'll enter edit mode by pressing spacebar, right click on grain size, select right to pattern. And then as we learned from what we previously did, I'll get out of edit mode by pressing spacebar, highlight it, select duplicate, go back into edit mode by pressing spacebar, and let's draw the same sort of curve for this. And whoops, play that back. doesn't sound too good. I hear like a popping in that. Let's try a lower value. Something more gradual. Hmm. I'm not really liking that. Let's get rid of it. So I'll press Control T to highlight the track. Control X to cut that out. And I want to save the work that I have so far, so let's go here to where have I been storing this? Sound design? No. I thought I had a folder for this, so we'll just make a new one. So we will create directory. And we'll just call this uh, boss entry 01. Save it. I'm going to play with the reverb a little bit, see if we can get it a bit shorter. Turn down the feedback. It's not too bad when I turn up the damping on the reverb. All right. I'm happy with that. Let me try one more thing. I'm going to add in a flanger and just see what that does in parallel to everything. Make sure I'm not clipping the recording. All right, we're good. Yeah, I'm not hearing much of an effect. I'll bypass it. Maybe I have to add an amp after it. Let me add an amplifier. Throw that in there. Increase the volume. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear it. Hmm. In fact, let's redo this routing. I'm just going to disconnect everything from the master output. And generally, when I do sound design, I'll put an amplifier here. I'll put a compressor. And I like to put a... Um, a distortion module as well and I'll run everything into here distortion module to add some grit compressor to tie everything together because I have all these disparate branches of the sound and then patch the amplifier to the output that way if the overall volume of the effect is too loud I can lower it alright it looks like the compressor is working bypass it. All right, I like the result. Because this is going to be coming out of a, a mobile speaker um, and potentially in a noisy environment, I'm going to compress it so it's a, a pretty even sound. Um, so that way...
it'll be nice and loud and uh, a little bit lower dynamic range coming out of that speaker. We can probably reduce or increase the threshold a bit so it doesn't compress as much. Because I really only want to take the top of the peaks off. Nice. And let's see the distortion. So that's good for some options, I think. We can do a couple different exports so we have different options. So I'll save this. And this is going to be the first option. So let's export to WAV format. And I'm just going to export it to the desktop, call it the same thing. We'll call it boss entry. A one output that and then we'll do our additional options so let me do an option with a bit of bit reduction and that has sort of a long noisy tail which I'll trim and actually let me try the bit reduction with some distortion and I will export that let's, let's call this boss entry 02 all right and then let me take the whole thing and let's put Let's see. Let's try a pitch shifter on the entire thing. So I'm actually going to... Let's take this distortion. Let's just uh, bypass it for now. Whoops. Bypass. And let's try automating the pitch of everything to increase. Something like that. So I'm going to save this. Uh, well, I can just disable that module. So we don't need to do a new save. So I'm just going to go over to here, another lane. And we'll do the same thing. We'll select the pitch module, right click on pitch, select right to pattern, get out of edit mode, highlight this, select duplicate, go back into edit mode. And we want to draw a rise in pitch. So we've got, let's go a little bit lower than the starting pitch we have now and just increase it. And what does that sound like? Uh, there's a lot of stepping because it's... I think that's a uh, that's a viable option. Um, it's sort of technical and musical and catchy. The melody is sort of sticking in my ears. I'd like to have a, a bit more of a minor sound to it, though. So. You know, you feel it's a, it's a bit more dissonant. You feel some fear when the boss spawns into the arena. So let's just try clicking around on the individual steps and see what we can get. liking that. OK. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save this as a new version because it's starting to get pretty different. And let's call this O2 for now. And I'll output that. And we'll call this O3. Right. And then I want to try one in a higher octave. So let's change this C2. Uh, highlight it. Oh, don't want to do that. Let's disable the level drawing. And I want to transpose this up an octave. And let's see what that sounds like. And I'll export one like that. It just may sound better coming out of the uh, cell phone speaker because it's in a higher register and we'll export this oh four hmm all right what else can I do with this sound let me try the loop module I don't use this ever so maybe we can get a cool effect out of it okay let's decrease the delay and we need a repeat value what do we have for modes ping pong and normal let's try three repeats oh that is cool Oh yeah, I'm liking that. Let's do two repeats. Okay, not as much. Now let's try a higher number. All right, three is the magic number here. All right, I like this sound. And this is pretty different, so I'm just gonna save as... Let's do this as three. I know the session numbers aren't directly corresponding to the versions I've output. They probably should. I probably should have saved one for each new version, but... Export. And let's make this 5. And then let me just do a couple where I play with the delay and see what we get. like those lower values. Let's go really low. Okay, that's cool too. So, let's try and correct what I did here. What number are we on? Um, desktop. So we're on number five, so this will be number six. So let me just start saving my session so they make sense. So I can get back, get back to them. So I'll do six. And let's export this one. Export to number six. Cool. And let's do one with an even shorter delay. And we will save project as seven because we want it to make sense. So we can go back and tweak it if they request that. Export to wave seven. All right. Nice. So we have seven options that we've made, and these could all be for one type of boss because there's right now there's like three or four bosses in the game and they're going to add uh, more continually. So I want to give them a lot of options for each boss and these are good options for the first one. So now we want to take in the effects and kind of make them all the same level. So let's see. I'm going to import in my audio from the desktop.
I want to import them in as new tracks. One track per channel. We want to do one track per file. Because if it's a stereo sound and we do one track per channel, I'm going to have two tracks for every sound that I bring in. So I'll have 14 tracks. I don't want that. I want one track per file. And we will import as new tracks. Import. Okay, slight routing issue. I'm hearing a double. So I have to unroute the input to each track. All right, good, I fixed it. Um, I could have just gone here to my uh, system input, my audio interface, right-clicked and selected disconnect all, but that would have disconnected, well, I believe that would have disconnected my audio in my screen recording software, so I rather would have just done it the long way. Um, all right, so we've got our Ardor session here. All the effects are in. I'm going to solo the effect I want to listen to. All right, and at this point, I want to make it loud for mobile, and I want to make sure that there's not too much low end in the uh, sound because those mobile phone speakers, they don't reproduce it well. So let's go to our mixer section. I've already got a limiter on the output. Oh, we got some clip in there. So I got the limiter, and I want to put an EQ in here as well. So let's try, oh, we got quite a few EQs. Let's try, well, let's do the calf equalizer. And we shouldn't need that many bands. So we'll do the, uh, we'll do the five band calf equalizer. I don't know what the difference between these two is. And I'll set this as a favorite, double click, insert plugin. And we have an equalizer. I want to place the limiter after the equalizer. And I'm going to put a basic low shelf in here to just filter out everything under, let's do 200 hertz for now, because cell phone speakers are terrible. All right, that thins it out too much, I think. So let's bring that down to like 100. Because I want it so that if people are listening through good headphones, which the vast majority of people, if they have headphones on a mobile device, will probably be using earbuds, but... All right, I think that's pretty safe. I don't want to go much lower. Maybe I can just bring this up a bit so it's a less of a cut. And I'll bypass it. So we got way more low end in there without the EQ. And I've just thinned that out so you can still hear, I'll bring that up a little bit more, you can still hear some low end. If you have headphones on, but if you're Oh yeah, that's that's too much low end for a mobile device. All right. So that's going to be applied to all of the effects. And then for the limiter, we can get some more volume. So right now where we are with volume, I'd like to see a little bit. I, I'd like to see the, the sound just touch the limiter a bit. Whoops. All right. Let's lower it. All right. 
think that's a, a pretty healthy volume without squishing the sound too much. So let's see how that sounds on our next one. Ah, uh, yeah, so that one has a, a really long tail because I crushed it quite a bit, so. Hmm. In fact, all of these have to be trimmed because he wants, the developer wants them to be approximately one to two seconds. So I'm just going to highlight all of these. I'll press G on the keyboard, hold down Shift, highlight all of them, and let's just pull them back, and let's fade them all out. Now I do want the, the fade in, the natural fade in that happens because it's a, a spawning and entry sound. And they all come out to a little over one second, which is... Okay, so let's listen to the second sound. third sound. I like that. That has a lot of a character. That'll that'll stick in your in your mind when you hear that. That one's cool and glitchy and technical. Those are sounding good to me. So what I will do is I'll solo this and I'm going to press R for the region tool. Select what I want to bounce. And uh, actually, I don't think I need to do that. I don't need to do the selection because they're all the same exact length. So what I can do is I'm going to press Alt E this will bring up the export window, and let's export these to, well, we'll just have them go into the export folder. And let's call this boss entry 01. And these are the, the mastered versions, so the ones on the desktop that are unmastered, I'm just going to delete. And I want to export them as Redbook Audio Format 44.1 which is what we've been exporting everything in the project as. And for time span, instead of selection, we should be able to do just session. And export. That is wrong. OK, so I want to export that again, but this time, oh, no extra format. But this time, under time span, we'll choose selection. And now when I export. It'll export just that. So if I navigate to my session, which is here, and Ardor, and Space Unknown Editing, and Export. No, that's the wrong one. What session am I in? I am in... Yeah, that's what I was in. Where did that export to? Space Unknown... Okay, okay, I'm I'm in the different session here. Got a little disorganized. So we'll go to Ardor Sessions, Music, where was it? Space Unknown, there we go, Player. Oh, I have a lot of sounds in here that I don't need right now, so let's get rid of these. And let's listen to this. All right, that's the length. I don't know if you can hear that. Let's see. Put that over. Is that coming out to you? No, it's not. Okay, well, just believe me. It sounds like what we heard in Ardor and exported. So I'm just going to repeat that for all of these. So shut off solo. Turn solo on for the next track. Highlight it. E, and we'll call this O2. Make sure time span is set to selection. So there is a bug where when you export multiple sounds, uh, one after the other, your preference of selection will change back to session after you do it three times. I filed a, a bug with the Ardor development team. So that is up there. But for now, I just have to check it each time and make sure it's set to selection, which is 
a little bit of a pain, but all right. Do this for boss entry three. Change that to three. Time span, selection, port. Number four. See that change back to session. It would be nice if there was a batch export feature. There, there may be, and I just don't know about it because I'm relatively new to the uh, Ardor workflow as I've been using Reaper. And I do actually have Reaper here on my system, um, but I want to give Ardor a shot because it's open source software. And I want to try and keep the workflow as open source as possible. Um, and I realize Sunvox as well is not an open source piece of software. Um, so this is five. Number six. And number seven. All right, and if we look at our export folder, they are all here. And I know you can't hear that because I didn't patch it correctly but they all sound good. They're at a good level. Um, so this is, this is good for the first boss and I will probably record myself doing the second and third bosses as well, uh, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.